thank you, Lord, for being so great, so wonderful, so awesome in our lives. Thank you, God, for being our everything. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will have your way in this place. And Lord God, we ask that your Holy Spirit will, and that our anointing will fall fresh on us, O oh God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that we pray that your word will go forth. And Lord God, we ask that uh, those who hear your word will abide by your word, and not only abide by your word, but also to spread your word. So Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we do give you the glory. We do give you the praise, for you are worthy of all of our praises, O oh God. Despite the work where our circumstances are, you are still an awesome God in our lives. And Lord God, and we just thank you now, and we just praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. If you will, turn with me to the uh, book of 1 Kings. The book of First First Kings, the 18th chapter, and we're gonna start reading at the 27th, the 17th verse. Acts, uh, excuse me, uh, First Kings, First Kings, chapter 18 and verse 17. A very familiar passage. But I think the Lord is going to share some new light or revelation this morning. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 17. And it read, And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art Thou he that troubled Israel? And he said, uh, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and have followed all. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto my Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves, four hundred, which did eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long hope ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Let's jump down to verse 30, 36. And it came to pass, as the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah, Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of, Is of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things that at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art God, the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of all, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of uh, Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sign of abundance of rain. Amen. Those that have here, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. 
a, a thought for uh, this morning is God will always win. God will always win. In a uh, so we have here that that uh, Elijah had met met with uh, King Ahab. Well, first of all, how did we end up here at Mount Carmel in the first place? The Bible says that uh, uh, Elijah. Ahab came to Elijah, or Elijah came or uh, met up with Ahab, and that Ahab questioned Elijah, asking Elijah that uh, was he the one that troubled Israel. So what prompted Ahab to raise this question to the prophet of the man of God to think that he was the one to be troubling Israel? You see, first of all, if you read back in uh, chapter uh, 17 and 16, you will find that uh, Israel had, uh, God had passed judgment upon Israel because of their wayward sinfulness. And uh, that Ahab was, end up being the king of Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel. And that uh, Ahab, the Bible says, that went back to do the things uh, that his forefathers had done. He did, he went by the way of uh, Jeroboam, Jeroboam, which was uh, Jeroboam had, was a king at one time, and he began to set up idols in Israel, that Israel would start uh, worshiping these false gods. So Ahab ended up being king, but the Bible says that Ahab was wicked more so than his forefathers were. So what made Ahab so worse than the kings of the kings prior to him was that Ahab not only did he do go by way of Jeroboam, but he also did a thing that no king before him had done. So Ahab, he began not only set up the idols, uh, the Canaanite idols that Israel would go away from God, but also what Ahab did was that uh, he married a, uh, a woman of the Zodianites, which ultimately was a woman by the name of Jezebel. And uh, so he went outside of the uh, uh, of Israel to marry a, a Gentile or a pagan woman, a one who uh, uh, was a uh, worshiper of Baal. Now, now, so so uh, when he uh, when he married Jezebel, Jezebel was one who was really a, a one who was a worshiper of Baal. She was a Zidonite. She worshiped Baal, and ultimately, she was a worshiper of Ashtaroth. And Ashtaroth was a, a moon god, and one who was power hungry, and one who uh, based their religion, if you will, off of love and sex. So Jezebel ended up being one who uh, was a worshiper of Baal, a worshiper of Ashtaroth, and uh, she was one who was power hungry, one who was self-centered, one who needed her attention and did whatever she had to do to get whatever that she wanted to get. <coughs> she was very, she was a very manipulative and very a, a very controlling and crafty and deceiving kind of person. So Jezebel, her, her, uh, she, she wanted. She wanted to uh, ultimately drive a nation from God that they would go and worship Baal. So what she did, she seduced and she manipulated Ahab and Ahab ended up marrying Jezebel. And ultimately, she, she, she wasn't the one who really uh, cared about Ahab, but her plan was to drive Israel away from God. And the best way she could have done that was that uh, to marry Ahab. 
So Ahab uh, fell into a trap. He fell by way of that manipulation. And then ultimately, what Ahab ended up doing, he ended up building altars and erecting groves or idols to the God of Jezebel, his wife, by the name of Paul. And I think I need to share notice with you this morning is that uh, I need to share that uh, Jezebel uh, uh, came in a low profile way. She looked one way, but her motives was another. And I think I need to share with all the men and brethren is that everything that looked good to you is not good for you. Right. You know, so then she, her main motive was to drive out a God and bring in ball on the scene. And so she did just that and uh, Ahab had listened to uh, his wife Jezebel who was uh, ultimately a worshiper of Baal, a worshiper of Satan. He erected all of these uh, shrines and all of these uh, and all of the gods uh, rendered to Baal and what made uh, the men of Israel ultimately to leave God was that uh, in those uh, uh, temples that ultimately that Ahab erected for his wife, uh, for his wife Jezebel is that uh, throughout those temples that they had, uh, if you will, priestess uh, pro uh, prostitutes in, they had prostitutes in those temples that ultimately uh, seduced the men of Israel that caused them to go away from the Lord. So then when God got word of this, when he saw these things going on, Elijah had prophesied to Ahab that there shall not be rain in Israel for the space uh, until he got word that until God gave him word that rain would return. So then uh, I, uh, Elijah had to go into hiding or God hid Elijah for a while while the famine and the rain stopped over and over Israel. Here. So they are suffering. They got this famine going on. There has not been rain by the space of three years. And uh, when the rain has seen that God finally had uh, three years later sent Elijah back to Ahab that uh, the Israel made to return back in and of himself. So then uh, uh, ultimately, ultimately to get the full thrust of this uh, this narrative, if you will read uh, the whole chapter of verse uh, chapter eighteen, so then ultimately that Elijah end up uh, uh, going back to see Ahab, and Ahab asked him a question that is, are you the one who troubled Israel? Yeah, but Israel. But uh, Elijah said that I'm not the one that troubled Israel. You are the problem. You and your wife that ultimately that caused Israel to go away and worship God. You brought these things on yourself and God withdrew the rain because of the sin that you have allowed the uh, 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 children of Israel to commit under your leadership. So then there then there, uh, Elijah said uh, unto uh, Ahab that you have permitted uh, uh, Israel to follow Baalim, the plural, so then they end up worshiping more than one God. So then he said now, he told Ahab that I want you now, I want you to gather me all of Israel over uh, into Mount Carmel that uh, and 450 of the prophets of Baal and meet me at Mount Carmel. <laughs> and not only those that are, are the prophet of Baal, but also bring those prophets who ate at Jezebel table. <laughs> I need to share notice on you this morning is you need uh, in your time go back and read Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20 in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20 because just as uh, is uh, just as Jezebel was a real person in the days of Elijah the spirit of Jezebel still live today yes, 
So we have a lot of people, we have a lot of people, men and women, who are eating at the table of Jezebel. We have a lot of people and a lot of uh, people in the church that who are uh, what they call the low profile, low profile Jezebel spirit. And what that is, is that uh, we have a lot of people who profess to be uh, Christians, those who come in a form of religion. They come like they are nice. They quote scriptures. Uh, they talk about how blessed they are. They talk about how uh, blessed you are. They uh, talk about being uh, blessed and highly favored. They sound all religious and they sound as if they are for God, but under underneath of the surface of it all God knows their heart and they know that they are talking and talk but they are not walking the walk. So we have a lot of people who are eating at Jezebel table and these low profile people, they are controlling people. They are uh, uh, seductive people. They are manipulative. They are deceiving people. They are uh, 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 they bring about division and strife. They bring about uh, animosity and jealousy within the church and also in throughout the body of Christ. <laughs> you see, their move is, you see, they desire they are a self-centered person and they desire to be in the light so then if they come and there's no profile, their desire is to cling to, to somebody they know who is anointed and it desire to cling to, to to someone who is in the position of authority they may come to act like they come to help you out but underneath of it all they come to undercut you and the ministry <laughs> they come to undercut you and your church <laughs> there are so many pastors in the city and nation <laughs> who are wondering why they have so much confusion in the church. You see, uh, there is a Jezebel spirit that is going around tearing up all of our churches and tearing up the personal lives of our people in the church. So, but uh, I think I need to share with you is that this spirit of Jezebel ultimately was born out of witchcraft. Now, you know, every church has their own, has some confusion, but those churches who had that extraordinary confusion and division and strife means that uh, there is somebody there or some people there who are carrying that spirit of Jezebel and ultimately is practicing witchcraft in your church. <laughs> So then, so then, uh, you have to be careful of the people who you put in authority. You have to be careful of those who you allow to be clean to you. You have to be careful not only in your church life, but also in your personal life. They bring about jealousy and enviousness. Not that you may have a whole lot, but you may have a little bit more than what they have. So therefore, they are hating on you. And you know, and people who are in the body of Christ, those who are in the local church, need to watch those who always want to have pull you off to the side and pull you off in a corner and want to talk to you about some scriptures to undermine the church and the pastor. You see, and you see, and the dangerous thing is that they do this stuff in secret. They do it in a manipulative way. They do it in a disguising way. They come uh, uh, as sheep in wolf clothing. And as long as you do not expose them, then they are able to get away with the things they are doing. You see, that is a dreadful manner in which that the those who carry that Jezebel spirit, their greatest fear is being exposed. You see, that was the problem with Jezebel here in this text. You know, Elijah saw what was going on. God held back the rain for three years, and now God sent Elijah back to Ahab because 
because now it is time for Jezebel to be exposed. It's about time for the children of Israel to be turned back on to the Lord. So then, uh, so then that uh, Elijah said, uh, bring all the prophets of Baal and bring all the children of Israel uh, to the Mount Carmel and we are going to sell this thing uh, to see who is God, uh, either Baal or either the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, so then uh, Ahab did not say a word, uh, but then what he did, he went and got all of Jezebel's prophets. He went and got all of the prophets of Baal. 450 of them there on a the mountain of Carmel. And all of children of Israel who had gathered around the mountain. But then Elijah spoke to the children of Israel. He said, how long will you hop between two opinions. If you will serve God or you will serve God. He said he said, uh, you need to make up your mind uh, of who you are going to serve. Uh, and I hear Jesus saying in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24 uh, that you cannot serve two gods. Uh, if you go hate one or you go love the other. Uh, if you go serve God or you go serve man. Uh, if you go serve God or you go serve man. Uh, and you know uh, we have a lot of people in church who are serving men, who are serving money, who are bringing about uh, uh, fleshly and materialistic desires uh, rather than being about the king of God uh, or the kingdom of God. Uh, they're more about things, uh, the things they can have, the things they can get. Uh, and that is a spirit of that Jezebel uh, trying to get all that you know how to get. Uh, no no matter how she get it or, or who she hurt in getting it. That's why you have to be careful of the people you allow in your life. So then, so then, uh, uh, Elijah said, how, uh, will, how long will you hop between two gods? And so then, uh, he told, Elijah uh, told the prophet of Paul, uh, he said, this is is what we are going to do. We're going to decide right now oh, who is God. Either God of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, or it is going to be a uh, Paul, or whom you serve. And then but Israel, they didn't say a word. But then what Elijah said, said this is what we are going to do. We are going to get two bullocks uh, and offer up a offering, uh, a sacrificial offering. Uh, I'm going to do one to God of Israel uh, and you are going to do the one for God. Uh, and whoever answers first, uh, then that's who will be God. Uh, and I think the Lord is saying to us and the world today uh, that uh, who will you serve? Uh, either you're going to serve God uh, or you going to serve the devil? Uh, you know, uh, you know what uh, Jesus said in Revelation uh, about the church. Uh, he said they have become lukewarm, uh, and I will rather spew them out of my mouth. Uh, you have to decide who you are going to serve, uh, and not let, let yourself uh, get caught up in all the things that is going around nowadays. Uh, so then. Uh, he leaving it up to you to decide. Uh, either you go on the narrow road uh, or where Jesus is uh, or you will go on the broad and narrow road uh, where everybody else is uh, because that narrow road uh, where Jesus is uh, leads to eternal life uh, and that broad road uh, leads to construction and damnation. Uh, the road where Jesus is uh, all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. 
that he humbled and died for your sin. But if you go on the broad road, uh, there you don't repent. Uh, and you ultimately go down to the place called hell. Uh, and I think I need to share notice uh, that uh, uh, Elijah uh, gave uh, the prophet of Baal uh, the first option. Uh, he let them go first. Uh, and what the prophet of Baal did that they built the altar, uh, they cut up the sacrifice, uh, they laid the uh, they laid the uh, ox on the altar, and then uh, he told them uh, to go ahead and pray to your God. Uh, so then the prophet of Baal, uh, 450 of them, uh, is gathered around the altar. Uh, there uh, for half a day uh, they was there uh, uh, praying uh, to a uh, ball uh, they would come and answer their prayer uh, they was coming uh, praying to Ashcroft uh, that he would answer their prayer uh, and I think I need to share notice on you this morning uh, that's maybe why uh, so many of us uh, uh, who've been fooled uh, by this Jezebel spirit Maybe you are praying to the wrong God because that very same person who called the vision, maybe you are going to them and they are bringing around about these false prophets. Maybe they are bringing about all of these false prophecies and you are holding on to the false prophecies rather than seeking God for yourself and I think I need to share notice that 450 of the false prophets of Paul was there crying they was there at the altar they were there begging the God of Paul or Ashroth to come in here and sit fire down but nothing ever happened they prayed all afternoon uh, to the prophet of Baal uh, until uh, the Bible says uh, that these false prophets uh, of Baal uh, what they are started to do uh, since they didn't hear anything, uh, since they didn't see anything uh, coming from the God they worship uh, the Bible says uh, they started cutting themselves uh, until they started bleeding uh, here and there and everywhere but he still did not answer and I think I need to share notice on you that's how the devil works once he gets you all caught up and trapped up he start having you doing bad things to yourself you may not be cutting yourself but you may be on cocaine you may not be cutting yourself but you may be on heroin you may not be cutting yourself, uh, but you may be on marijuana, uh, you may not be cutting yourself, uh, but you may be on drugs and alcohol, uh, because you are mad and upset, uh, because who you were worshiping, now uh, had turned their backs on you, uh, now, uh, uh, now, uh, so now, uh, they did it all evening, uh, and here comes the evening sacrifice uh, and all uh, and Elijah uh, and made fun of their God uh, and said maybe he is sleeping uh, maybe he is doing something uh, maybe he is on the phone talking uh, and you cannot get a hold to him uh, now since you cannot get a hold to him uh, and since now uh, you cannot do anything uh, it is evidently uh, that he is not going to hear you uh, so I think I need to share notice with you uh, that anyone uh, who feels they are under the spirit of that Jezebel spirit uh, one thing you can do uh, turn around uh, and go the other way uh, because anyone uh, who is controlled by the Jezebel 
Jezebel spirit uh, is not of God uh, and will not repent. Uh, they show they are like God, but they are not of God. Uh, so then Elijah uh, had been uh, gave them their chance. Uh, so what he did, uh, he took the ox uh, and he began to cut up the ox. Uh, he built an altar uh, and then he took 12 stones uh, of Israel uh, and then he took the wood uh, and put on top of the stones uh, and then on top of the stones uh, he put the wood on the altar uh, and then he took the ox uh, that he cut up uh, and put on the altar uh, but then, uh, then uh, and then uh, uh, Elijah uh, had told the people uh, to take uh, uh, four barrels of water uh, and pour it on the altar. Uh, and then he dug a ditch uh, around the altar. Uh, and then he said, uh, uh, do it one more time. Uh, take a barrel of water uh, and pour it on the altar. Uh, and then he told them, uh, I want you to do it a third time. Uh, and they took one more barrel uh, and put it on the altar. Uh, and then that trench uh, that was around the altar, uh, the water uh, had went down into the trench. Uh, so he had to do it uh, uh, three times. Uh, and then the trench uh, that was around the altar uh, was able uh, to hold three gallons of water. Uh, so now uh, there will be no question uh, if fire rained down, uh, they wouldn't have any excuse. Uh, they wouldn't be able to make up anything. Uh, and I think uh, I need to tell you uh, that I believe that Elijah uh, uh, had them uh, to pour three uh, three barrels of water uh, on the altar. Uh, one for the Father, uh, one for the Son, uh, and one for the Holy Ghost. Uh, you see, it may seem like uh, that Elijah uh, was standing all by himself, uh, but now uh, he had three more entities uh, right there with him. Uh, so he told them uh, to trench the altar uh, with all the water. Uh, and I think I need to share notice on you. Uh, when God, uh, when you take it to the Lord uh, and you do what he said do, uh, there will be no question uh, to everybody around you uh, that it